Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be playing Tucana Builders, which is a tile laying game and a sequel to the roll and write game Trails of Tucana, which you may remember from a playthrough I did a few years ago. This is coming to Essen 2023 from A Porter Games and I'm going to be playing the solo mode today, which pretty much everything that you do on a turn is the same as you do in a multiplayer game. You have just got a few restrictions in the solo game to make it trickier and you are trying to score well and impress the Tucana people, animal folk who have been scattered around by a volcanic eruption. And so we've got to rebuild and connect everyone back together. Before I get started, I recommend you turn on the Klingon subtitles. If I made any mistakes, they'll be corrected there. Thanks, Steve. These Essen games are coming out at quite a rate, though, and there may be a little window where I haven't given him chance to do subtitles yet. Sorry, Steve, but I've hit crunch time. Right, we have a little bit of setup. I thought I'd show you the setup and how all of this works. So there are starting setup cards that tell you where to place the huts. Obviously, you'd have these stood up normally, but we're bird's eye, so I'm showing them you. Yeah? So there's loads of different ways that the huts can be configured at the start. And then we have these starting cards here that are all going to relate to these spaces. And we have some tiles numbered one to six. So we shuffle these start cards up, draw one, and everyone playing gets the same setup of their huts and the same setup of these tiles. So we Got the yellow fish here, so I want to get my one tile. And there's a little dock on the tile. I need to place this so the dock's in the same position as it is printed on my board. So it's going to be in that orientation. And then the next one's going to be the blue fish. So that will go like that. And so the tiles have paths on them. We want to link up these animals and they might have animals on them as well. In fact, they're most likely to have some animals on them. The ones with crossroads and multiple directions are rarer. So here we are with all of those tiles out. We are going to draw cards from this deck, 12 of them, that are going to tell us a type of terrain that corresponds to the types that are on our player boards. And then we have many, many tiles that are all shuffled up. Each player will draw one of those tiles and place a tile on a corresponding space of their board, trying their best to connect animals to these huts. After the 12 cards are up, that's the end of the first round, we will score all of our huts. A hut is worth one point for every animal of the corresponding colour that's connected. So yellow wants to be next to pumas, red next to snakes, blue next to monkeys. But the toucans are wild cards, so they count for a point no matter which hut they are connected to. If you connect your huts up, then all the animals connected to them count for both huts as well. So you can earn some extra points doing that. Once we've scored all of the huts, we shuffle up all of the 12 cards again, go through them one more time, score again, and that's our final score. There is an advanced extra thing, these achievements cards here. You shuffle them all up and pick two for the game, and they're a way that you can score some extra points, a bit of a race. So in this game, we can get eight points if we connect all the starting tiles to each other, and six points if we connect huts A and D to each other. So you don't need to have them, you can make the game simpler without having them. In the solo game though, we must achieve these cards. If we can do them in round one, we get the higher point value. If we do them in round two, we get the lower points value. If we haven't done both of the cards by the end of the game, our score is counted as zero. Normally in the multiplayer game, the first person to achieve one of the cards gets the higher points value. Anyone else who achieves it gets the lower points value. So that's what we're trying to think of here. We've also got a wild card. Once per round, you can use your wild card to ignore the terrain that's come out and put the tile you've drawn anywhere instead. So let's start us off. We need to be thinking about connecting all the tiles together and connecting these huts together. That's going to be tricky. So I need to grab a random tile and it's going to go on a forest space. So I've got one with a tight bend. Is there a way that I can place this that's going to help with connecting these huts? That's kind of the thing that I'm thinking about the most here. You see there's animals printed on our starting tiles. There's animals printed on these paths outside because as well as achieving these, we also want to try and score well. I think I'm going to try and see if we can get this connected up to this tile here. So no point advancement yet, but it could be working towards the yellow hut. We'll, we'll see how it goes. So that's one of our turns down. Then flip over lava and the tile I get is going to have another sharp bend, another monkey, but this time a snake. And it's going on lava. So, you know, might be an idea to try and connect it up to the hut, but we're, we're ignoring this snake that's right here. So remember, we also want to connect up A and D. I want to have this point in that way, actually. Let's see if we can connect A up somehow, and maybe something like this could work out. This tile split off over there. 
this tile could maybe connect to D. Maybe we could do it that way. If we've got a whole network of starting tiles, which we need to do, then next we've got forest again. And our tile is going to be a bit straighter with a monkey. So maybe we could just get it you know, simply connected up to an E-hut and then our E-hut is scoring a point at least. All of our others are scoring zero at the moment. I don't think it's going to be particularly useful. It'll probably be good for connecting huts up, but I'm, I'm just going to put it there. At least I've got a point coming in now in scoring. We've got forest again. Remember, we have got the wild card, but we can't use it again until we score. Oh, surely a crossroads is going to be quite useful. Like maybe for, oh no, if it had folks closer together, I'd think about, you know, what about here connecting the two cans up? What about here? Just thinking of the big network of tiles, probably at the cost of too many points though. Lava, then, oh, we've got a straight. So that would be quite nice for there, wouldn't it? We could we could probably link it up at some point later. So I've kind of cut this lava space off and this one from joining the path. So we could have it here. Or do we use the wild and just carry on with the original plan of connecting it up here? And we're using my wild. I'm probably going to regret that. I will get it back after round one. And then we've got the rocks, the mountains, and that's going to have also a nice snake in. Now that's not quite straight enough to fit in there. We could just have it going off to the side and maybe we'll connect more up this way. So we're kind of cutting off the plan doing this. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to pop it there. So that red will score a little bit more. Now the paths finish at the huts as well. So we can't just have one great big path all around the outside and everything's connected up. The paths go from hut to hut if they link up like that. We've got rocks again. I'm hoping for a nice straight piece there. No. We've got another monkey though. That could be good for... Oh, what about there? That would connect another monkey to hut E and this toucan over here. Yeah, I don't mind that. Okay, next up we've got sand and it's going to be a snake. You don't have to have the paths connecting to anything if you don't want. But in our case, we, we definitely want them connecting to something. I don't think I can place it in such a way that's going to help our little network in the middle. Maybe have something coming off here. It's not useful for D, but maybe it's going to link up A and D at some point. That's what I'm hoping for. Maybe make up for all the points I'm not going to get in round one at the end of round two. Lava. So we've got three cards left here. A monkey could just go here and then hut D is connected to a toucan and a puma, maybe more later as this all gets connected up. And then Hutty is connected to another monkey and a toucan. It's probably not a bad thing to do, actually. So there's no lava connecting right to sea. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm accepting that. I wouldn't say I'm quite happy with it. Sand again. So we, oh, another, I feel like we've been in this situation before. So could just point this over, hoping to connect it to B and then connect it up with a bend over here. But it's, it's, it's starting to get like, you're needing some very specific things. And how's this getting connected to this? I've been thinking, there's some ways to do it. We're going to have to, we're gonna have to think about a lot of things. This just ties you up in knots, every kind of decision, just in the multiplayer game without, these are just optional in the multiplayer game. And from, I'd say, the first tile getting laid, you're just like, oh, I didn't quite want that. That's really getting in the way of what I was thinking here. Oh, a, a straight tile, that's that's what we want for there is, oh, and that is rocks. I think that would be pretty perfect. One there would be nice as well for linking things up. But in terms of points as well, this yellow now goes all the way up to here and should be worth quite a few points. We just need a really sharp bend there on sand. <gasps> We've got sand. Is it going to be a piece with a really sharp bend on it? It is not. Just like connecting up A and D as well. Yeah, that's going to have to be something to do with these pieces, isn't it? So could sand, maybe it's going to do something towards F a little bit, like just start f being worth something other sandy spaces we could be trying to link things up like trying to bring this around and then it doesn't need as tight a piece there but we need a differently specific piece to go here after that maybe we'll get a crossroads there and this will all link up probably not though i feel like i'm cutting things off right that is the end of round one though haven't achieved either objective yet but hopefully it's going to be possible so let's score our huts a is connected to a snake two three Four snakes. I don't think any toucans. I've cut off the ones on the outside. So that is four points for hut A. Hut B is also red. It's connected to absolutely nothing. Same for C. D though. Nothing up that path, but this path. One, two, three, four, five. Realise my fingers weren't actually catching up with the numbers I was saying. And uh, then E is blue. So we've got here. Let's go along this path. We've got one, two, three, four five six i think 
and then F we just connected to one thing. So I wouldn't say amazing there. I mean, those tracks do go up to 40 each, but we can bring it back with round two. So we get the wild card again. Okay, so to start us off, we have sand and the tile we want has a big bend on it that it might not be useful. Like I'm, I'm not even too worried about the animals that are on it. I just know that I've been hoping for a really sharp corner there. I, ha I am there as well, though. We're just going to have to hope, I think. I mean, that is connected up to D as well. It's another yellow and it's connected up to E. So the yellow, another blue and two toucans. But we've got to connect A up to this. I'm happy with that, though. That's good. Then we have got rocks and a crossroads. Is this going to help at all? No, because that wants to be straight across. I mean, that could potentially help connecting D to things. Could it? Maybe going around that? I don't know. It's not going to help there, because we want something straight across. It kind of helps there, doesn't it? It connects B to more things. Gets B involved in this big path. Yeah, let's get B involved. And you can see from the bottom here, I should have mentioned this earlier, this tells you all of the tile types that are in the game. There are not many crossroads. So we've got lava. And what do we want here? We want... So this lava space is very important, but I don't know what we want here. We want some kind of bend linking us to this, I guess. Or sharp bend, sharp bend. But, I mean, they are... There's a sharp bend in my hand right now. There's 24 of them. So we've got to go on lava. So do we commit to putting that there and needing a sharp bend there and there to connect all of this up? But this isn't connected to anything. I think we, we need a straight there. All we needed... No, the crossroads wouldn't have worked. There were different kind of crossroads might have worked, like that one. Yeah, turn it that way, because we want that connecting up there, and that connecting up there, and this connecting to that here. I don't know what the chances of this happening are. Lava is not a space I think we need right now. It's not something that's going to help. Although it could, couldn't it? Just a straight piece. I do have the wild card. Where did I want a straight piece? There. Do I use it? That's then A connected up all the way to here. We need a tight bend there, and then a straight or, or a bend could go there. <gasps> Maybe that's something to do. Wild card. Pop that there. Next up, sand. And the piece is going to be a sharp bend would be perfect. It is not. It's a bendier bend. Well, I've used my wild. So you can go there. There would be terrible. And stuff has been able to do things. Oh, no, this is this is fine, isn't it? That, that's, that's what we want. Cool. Right. OK. So now, are A and D linked up? D... Yeah, A and D are linked up. Brilliant. So we're in round two, so we only get the four points, but that's one of our objectives done. So all we need to do, before we can stop panicking about this, oh, we've, it's unlikely, isn't it? We need a sharp bend there, or two kind of medium bends on these two pieces, I guess, could connect all of the starting tiles up. There's options, but not many of them. None of them are great. Okay, forest. And there is a lovely crossroads that probably would have been quite useful. I mean, yeah, that, that could substitute as a sharp bend, but we've used our wild. So this is going in a forest space. I suppose, like, putting it kind of here connects A to another snake. I know that's not, that's not a massive thing, really. Just connect D up to a toucan. Maybe that's going to connect to something else. Yeah, I don't know that it can do very exciting things, really. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pop it there rock so that's kind of important isn't it this could be an important space <gasps> a sharp bend that is what we need but here so sharp bend there is not going to help much sharp bend here is not going to help much it could potentially lead to something not like our objective here it's just going to give us one point for connecting a monkey here it's going to give us one point for connecting a puma but could link to another tile so i'm going to pop it down there if it had have been one of the wider bends, like that one, I would have put that there, because then wide bend, wide bend, and that could connect up. And we'd have two options. But that's not what came out. We've got forest, which is another terrain type that I don't think we're too fussed about. So snake connecting to F isn't very exciting. Snake connecting to B is something that wouldn't go anywhere else. We could connect the snake to A, and then it's going down this puma path and might connect to something else along the line. Maybe. I'm most excited about sand and rocks. I hope they're coming up in the <laughs> deck. What have we got here? A straight ahead piece on forest for a monkey. I don't, yeah, I don't think that that can help. I mean, it could connect 
D to a token might end up connecting to C, but I doubt it. What have we got? Three things left to place. Yeah, connects it to something. Okay, what terrain types have we got left? Lava, and we've got a bend. Oh, that's, yeah, would work there. Oh, could actually pop that there. It's a lava for A, and it's a puma for F. Yeah, that could be okay. Tidy all this up going everywhere. So, sand. And, I mean, this needs to be a tight bend or a wide bend. There are loads of potential tiles left, obviously, when you're playing solo. So, it's a completely random pick. I dropped it. Is it this one? I hope it was. Well, you would have seen it in the split second. I think that means we can, we are eligible to score. And it's connecting to yellow and, oh, that's going to be great. That is absolutely fantastic. It is a highly likely tile to come out as well. So the last one, rocks. So it could still have been done with two long pens, but no, the last one was a straight. So a straight on rocks and it's got a snake on it. So they're right. And then I'm, I'm sure this big chain links to A somehow. Yeah, here. And it also links to C, so if we've got any monkeys, now they all score. <gasps> so let's let's just check here. The starting tiles, do they connect to each other? Yeah, you connect there, then you split off, you connect there, you connect there, you connect there, you connect there. Yes, all of the starting tiles are connected to each other. So there's 10 points. So it's going to be a bit trickier now doing all of this. A scores 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... And then it splits. I'm going to put a marker reminding me to come back to this split. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, another crossroads, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, I think, A scores, which is huge. Then B, still, it's, it's linked up to all that stuff. It won't go through A and connect to those ones. But I think it'll connect up to loads of it because all of this is connected. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen, I think that is. C is blue. But he's on this great big path, isn't it? So let's see. There's nothing around here. It links up here. So we've got two, three. Up here, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. D gets one, up oh, two, and then oh the let's do another little path. Oh, this is all this is all the big path. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15. Well, I'm potentially missing some. You can see better than me. E. Is, is he in the network? Yeah, e, e connects to the network as well. I think it's just F that doesn't. We're still connected to a few things. E gets 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And finally, F is connected to 1, 2. Okay, <laughs> the big crescendo, but still, these points are a lot higher than I've managed previously. So we have, we have a little score pad included, which is just the scores from your huts, 23, 35, and 32. And then you write your minimum score in. This is a tiebreaker in the multiplayer game. If you've got a tied score, it's the highest minimum score wins. And so we've got, I'm not in the really great scores, but still pretty good, I think. I think we've got 100. 100 exactly, because you're not adding the minimum score on. And in the rules, try to achieve as high a score as possible, play the same rules as a multiplayer game, including the achievement cards, but you score the highest point if you do the objectives in round one, the lowest if you do them in round two. If you have not met the objective on both cards, you score no points and lose the game. And so the two corner people will now make their judgment based on your score. 100, hey there, good looking. I guess we'll rename this game to Kana Bodybuilders. So we're not quite marrying the Toucan King, but we haven't been thrown in the lava. I feel pretty good about that as a score. Hopefully nothing went glaringly wrong that I've forgotten about here. As I said, there's loads and loads of different tiles that come out at random, different configurations for the huts, different configurations and orientations for your starting tiles. And I think there's six different achievement cards as well. Two of those at random will be put in if you're using that variant, which I'd recommend once you're used to the game. Nice little race element and 
something to kind of do. Like it can distract you as well. Like depending on the tiles that come out, you put in a great big, like you focus in on this to try and get the six points and put in a great big static path down the middle of your board might completely ruin it for you. If the starting tiles have worked out for that though, and you've maybe gotten a few junctions in your drawers, then you can see that like connecting these things up and connecting huts to each other and double dipping with the score can really massively help you out. It can be really tricky. It can be really frustrating. You know, all the things just like the perfect pieces come out, but it's the wrong terrain. Or this was my last shot on this terrain and I've drawn the one thing I didn't need to complete this path. But hopefully, you know, frustrating in a fun way, in the board gamey way. Thank you so much for watching. Again, this will be available from Essen 2023 uh, from A Porter Games. And you can see loads more Essen videos from me already up and up for the rest of this week as well, because it's Essen week. A Porter will also have House of Cats, a roll and write game you can see a playthrough for, and an expansion to Revive that'll be a video for later in this week. If you'd like to support the channel, you can subscribe. There's a bell that'll notify you. Uh, leave us your comments. Read all of the comments. And there are ways to support the channel on Patreon or Ko-fi in the description. Massive thanks if you can do that. It's how I'm able to do any of this stuff. Thank you so much for watching, though, and I'll see you for the next game. Bye.